Okay, are you still ready for this? Hey, okay. we're going to pay attention. Yes, part three, the Broadacre Agro Cult of Harvest Everythingism. You want to hear about it too? The conclusion. Look at this. The multitudes are gathering. Okay, this is the finish of the three-part series, which actually had a three-part prequel yesterday, all drawn from New Scientist magazine, issue 30 for March 2019. It's a corker of an issue. And uh, in the first two issues, the two parts of the series, we've looked at that. We've looked at that. We have dwelt longingly and lingering, lingeringly on that. We have considered the corded wear people. We then became the beaker people. But they were Yamnayans all along. We have thunk about how the corded beaker Yamnayas arrived in Britain and within a hundred years all the British men were dead. And the question is asked, were the Yamnaya the most murderous people in history? Okay. So we come along down here and we'll pick it up from genetic wipeout. In other words, there were now two types of Bell Beaker people. One with roots in Iberia and one with corded wear and ultimately Yamnaya roots. Christensen thinks the Yamnaya beakers then took advantage of the maritime know-how of their Iberian friends and voyaged to Britain some 4,400 years ago. See map, page 31. Here we go. Very quick rerun of the closing scenes of the previous video. The fact that the genetic analysis showed the Britons then all but disappeared within a, few, a couple of generations might be significant. It suggests the capacity for violence that emerged when the Yamnaya lived on the Eurasian steppe remained even as these people moved into Europe. Switched identity from Yamnaya to corded ware, and then switched again from corded ware to Bell Beaker. In fact, there is much stronger evidence that these Yamnaya beakers were ruthless. By about 4,500 years ago, they had pushed westwards into the Iberian Peninsula, where the Bell Beaker culture originated a few centuries earlier. Within a few generations, about 40% of the DNA of people in the region could be traced back to the incoming Yamnaya Beakers, according to research by a large team, including Reich, that was published this month. More strikingly, the ancient DNA analysis reveals that essentially all the men have Y chromosomes characteristic of the Yamnaya, suggesting only Yamnaya men had children. The collision of these two populations was not a friendly one, not an equal one, but one where the males from outside were displacing local males and did so almost completely, Reich told New Scientist live in September. This supports Kirstensen's view of the Yamnaya and their descendants as an almost unimaginably violent people. Indeed, he is about to publish a paper in which he argues that they were responsible for the genocide of Neolithic Europe's men. It's the only way to explain that no ma male Neolithic lions survived, he says. Surprisingly, this isn't a new idea. Some prominent 20th century archaeologists were convinced that migrants from the steppe arrived in Europe about 5,000 years ago. One of them, Marja Gimbertus, even argued that they were exceptionally aggressive individuals who brought violence and social change to the continent. Her ideas were deeply controversial in her lifetime, but ironically the geneticists are now coming quite close to what Gimbertus was writing about in the 1960s, says Hyde. What's more, it is now emerging that the Yamnaya didn't limit their sites to Europe. The latest genetic evidence reveals that they also went east into the Indian subcontinent. See, Europe is not enough. Page 30. Europe is not enough. They went east as well as west. Europe is not enough. 
Almost all people of Europeon descent can trace their paternal origins back to the inhabitants of the Eurasian steppe. In recent years, it has become clear that these people, known as the Yamnaya and their descendants, travelled across the continent during the Neolithic, replacing locals, particularly the men, as they went. See main story. Now we have discovered the Yamnaya also migrated east. A study by David Reich at Harvard Medical School and his colleagues posted to the Bio R14 preprint server in 2018 gives us an idea of when and how this happened, using DNA samples from the remains of hundreds of people who lived across South Asia between about 7,000 and 3,000 years ago. The team found evidence that Yamnaya-related DNA began appearing there between 4,000 and 3,000 years ago. Those steppe pastoralists mingled with the people who may have been related to the inhabitants of the famous Indus Valley civilization. In doing so, they, they formed an, quote, ancient North Indian, unquote, population, one of two ancestral populations that define the ancestry of most people living in the Indian subcontinent today. What's more, incomers from the steppe may have brought major cultural changes. Speaking at New Scientist Live in September, Reich pointed out that people in the Indian subcontinent today who carry the largest amounts of ancient North Indian ancestry tend to speak similar languages to one another, and often, but not always, belong to upper castes. As in Europe, it looks like one, the steppe migrants were largely young, male, and vi um, violent. A study by Martin Richards, the University of Huddersfield, UK, and his colleagues found that maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA sequences changed relatively little when they arrived. By contrast, between 60 and 90% of the men now living in the area can trace their paternally inherited Y chromosomes to Yamnaya-related migrants. Indigenous males seem to have been marginalised by the new arrivals much more than the women and were unable to have children to the same extent, says Richards. This seems unlikely to have been a wholly benign process. So, from Gobekli Tepe emerged the cult of Harvest Everythingism. It spread throughout Europe, made Europe prosperous, and then through overcrowding they had a population crash, whereupon the axe-wielding horse warriors from the steppe invaded Europe, killed all the men, raped all the women, and bred the sort of Euro peons, landless ignorant peasant from Europe comes, who showed up here on a bloody sailing boat 238 years ago to colonise Australia. Now the colon is long muscular tube full of shit. You want to colonise somewhere, colonise it, you go a long, long way from home and you shit all over everything that you don't understand. That's how the Euro peons colonised Australia. However, anyway, after breaking the fourth wall, back to the story. Even if they weren't the most murderous people in history, there is no doubting that they spread far and wide. This may be another reason the Yamnaya story is gaining traction now. A few decades ago, mass migration was far from our minds, says Hayde, but the present Social and political environment has changed that. Now we are acutely aware of the many forces that can spur huge groups of people to traverse the globe. Um, so what he seems to be suggesting between the lines is that the reason Europe is currently terrified by the prospect of being invaded by outsiders is because their mitochondrial DNA remembers the coming of the Yamnayans. Could be sort of kind of a bit like the rise of the nationalist, one white nation supremacist, Australian political lunatic fringe extremists who appear to be absolutely terrified at the thought of strangers coming here in boats because they remember ancestrally how easy it is to steal Australia from the people who live here because 
They did it. Their ancestors did it. We did it. That's how come I'm sitting here on Aboriginal land telling this story. Because John Henry Wharton did not stay in Yorkshire in 1881. He came out here and got here in 1882. And my DNA has been living hereabouts ever since. And I spent my life watching the ecology and the biosphere collapsing under the impact of industrial scale, broadacre, agro-cultural harvest, everythingism. In my lifetime, the population of Australia has more than doubled. The population of the planet has more than doubled. The harvest everythingists have taken over the world. It seems to have taken five or six thousand years between leaving Gobekli Tepe and becoming the Yamnaya horse riding, axe wielding warriors who raged through Europe and in less than 500 years conquered the whole shit box and shoot and match. And since then, what have the Europeans done for the rest of the world? They've stolen the whole world and destroyed it on the run. Rage, smash, grab and pillage is the way of Europeans. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. I've been meaning to tell the story of the broadacre agro cult of harvest everythingism for a couple of years. But a cloud free satellite photo was not enough. The narrative was greatly aided and assisted by my $9.50 hard copy of New Scientist magazine, collected from the local news agent. Would I lie to you? Have a good one. And now, the content maker can relax and review the day's activities, checking for mistakes and deciding whether to upload this stuff anyway, because I've put two days into reviewing a single magazine. But I think it had to be done. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao. The state of the world, as revealed by a new scientist, is indeed elegantly sufficient to make a man turn to drink in the muddle of the day. Ask any swamp wallaby. Or kangaroo. They're not as silly as they look, you know. They have zero bullshit tolerance from humans. And yet, or perhaps because they hang around with little old me. Take it easy.